My passion involves helping two of Africa's greatest icons. One of the world's most well-known species, the African lion, the roar, the quintessential sound of Africa. In the early 1900s, there were as many as 200,000 lions roaming across the African continent. Today, there are less than 35,000, and they're declining at a staggering rate. The second icon, the legendary Maasai people, celebrated as one of Africa's most colorful tribes. Young warriors protect their livestock and families. But their pastoral way of life is challenged by rangeland degradation, land use change, and a growing human population. These two icons are struggling to exist, and they're coming into conflict. They're colliding. What would you do if your prized cow was killed by a lion? Or if your bank account was being raided on a daily basis and you were powerless to stop it? In order to safeguard their cattle, the Maasai amass thorn branches around the perimeters of their livestock corrals. They then stand guard each night, waiting for lions. But it takes a lot of work to maintain those cattle corrals. And as you can see around this structure, the landscape's denuded. The Maasai have to go further and further afield to find the thorn. Large holes and low fencing makes it very easy for a lion to jump in. And when lions kill Maasai cattle, young warriors retaliate by killing lions. Not only do they use spears, but these days traditional means are giving way to modern technology, devastating poisons and guns. The challenge is to find a better way. Well, in the Maasai Step, the African People and Wildlife Fund is partnering, teaming up with Maasai communities to find new solutions to conflicts where people and wildlife live in close proximity. My history in Africa started 15 years ago as a Fulbright Scholar in Kenya. And I went to the Maasai, to the Amboseli ecosystem, to learn about local involvement in conservation. After a year and a half of study, I was incredibly frustrated by what I found. There was more rhetoric involved in community conservation than real action on the ground. And yet I really saw that the promise was still there. This took me to Tanzania, where I met my husband, and we embarked on a journey to discover how community conservation could really work on the ground. We lived in our Land Rover on the top of it for more than three years, following lions, learning about the local people, the beauty of their culture, and the challenges that they face. People can live with wildlife, but real solutions emerge in, in areas where people are truly engaged from the outset to address their own problems. From our rural environmental center, we've made a long-term commitment to the community. By being there, by being place-based, we're working with the next generation of warriors to explore new solutions to emerging issues and age-old conflicts. And what we've done is we've changed the scenario. Instead of asking all the questions ourselves or make, de developing all of the answers, we've empowered rural community members to be the drivers of change. This gentleman on the right, his name is Saruni Moses. He's working with warriors talking about a conflict between livestock and cattle. Many years ago, Saruni was actually attacked by a lion when he was helping a friend, um, and he was nearly killed. But today, he's one of the greatest defenders of wildlife. Why is that? We changed the focus from the species to the people and concentrated on developing local skills and abilities to self-manage their natural resource. Here, Saruni is looking at um, a large carnivore track that had, after having killed a cow, and he's with Kisau, and they're taking a GPS point. And they're doing this even though Saruni has never had the opportunity to go to school. We came together with Maasai communities, and we developed an elegant innovation for the reduction of lion livestock conflict. We call it a living wall. It's an environmentally friendly enclosure that combines chain link fencing with living trees as fence posts. We believe in empowering people to help themselves, so the Maasai contribute to the cost of the chain link fencing. Now, their contributions are sometimes a little unorthodox, a goat, a sack of corn, uh, in exchange for the chain link. 
but what they've really contributed is a powerful innovation. When we discussed bringing in fence poles from a town 100 miles away, the Maasai said, why don't we plant Camifera africana instead? This, watch the photo here on the right. This is the same fence six months later. And what this has done is, as the trees grow, they add height to the fence, so a lion and a leopard can't jump in. And the Maasai no longer have to spend vital time going out to look for the acacia thorn. So we're also protecting habitat for livestock and wildlife. It's a win-win-win solution for the Maasai, for the lions, and the magnificent habitat of the Maasai steppe. And what it is, is a combination of modern technology and Maasai wisdom. We have 50 living walls in place. By the end of this year, we'll have more than 100. But just look at what they're doing. We've reduced livestock depredation by 62%. There have been no retaliatory killings at households that have living walls. And if you focus on the red dots here on this slide, those are conflicts at corrals. Look at how they're disappearing, how quickly this landscape is changing. This technology is protecting hundreds of lions, potentially thousands, in the Maasai steppe, and it's being exported to other places and countries. And for once, with their livestock protected, the Maasai now sleep soundly at night. And that's what we set out to accomplish. We wanted to help build the skills of rural villagers to self-manage their natural resources. But there's so much more going on. It's not just living walls. At our Rural Environmental Center, these photos were taken and they celebrate our partners in conservation, the Maasai people. And I, as we look at these photos, I challenge you to think about how you can incorporate this real community involvement in conservation in the landscapes where you live. Whether you work with bears, wolves, mountain lions, and face conflicts with these species, the answers lie in the incredible energy, intellect, and opportunity of the person sitting right next to you, your neighbor. With this technology, we're transforming warriors fighting wildlife into warriors for wildlife. And by empowering individuals, we have the effect of these people reaching hundreds of others. We can all be warriors, working towards a more positive vision for the next generation of people and wildlife. Are you a warrior for wildlife? Thank you.